don't know how this is going to come out because I'm working on two things at a time, meaning I got two computers, one of them I'm doing one process, another one I'm doing another process on, and uh, I'm over here talking to myself or praying to myself or uh, uh, working on my ideas. Uh, and the idea that I have in my head right now is about um, how to argue, how to how to enjoy arguing. Yeah, how to enjoy your arguments because they are productive. That's what I'm gonna write down. That's what I'm gonna call it. This one is. <clears throat> How to enjoy your arguments. Let me put this in my notes here. Uh, let's see. Um, comedy titles. Sermons. Ugh. I'm. Uh, uh, this is going to be radio topics. Okay. Radio. Radio topic names. Right. How to. Enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive. How to enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive. How to enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive, informative, right? <clears throat> because they are productive and productive, informative, and uh, transformative. So, how to enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive, informative, and transformative. Um, my <clears throat> my father tells a story. Um, he's told me a story a long time ago. And because my dad is, because <laughs> my dad is old, <laughs> and and he doesn't know at this moment yet that uh, that I capture the audio of. Pretty much every single conversation that we've had for the past eight years. Um, when he tells a story, he, he probably knows in his mind that he's told the story before, but he's telling the story uh, again with a different um, viewpoint based on whatever else we're talking about. Um, my father, uh, I don't know if my father was supposed to be a preacher. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think that if my father had um, a gift, uh, it was a gift for talking, a gift for arguing, a gift for, explaining a gift for being opinionated um, and it's taking me it's taken me a long time to form 
opinions that I could uh, argue with someone and actually uh, convince them or if I don't convince them uh, convey viewpoints that they may or may not have heard whoever I'm um, whoever my opinion is being shared with uh, and and I, I, I credit my dad partially for some of this because um, he he loves to converse he loves to talk and um, he doesn't it doesn't matter who he's talking to you know he he um, he is a conversation person and he tells this story about his father, Robert, which is my grandfather on, you know, obviously my father's side. He uh, he tells a story about Robert and Nancy, his parents. My grandparents were Robert and Nancy Walker. Um, Nancy passed away. Uh, more recently, Robert passed away when um, I was in eighth grade, or before I was in eighth grade, or something like that. And um, Robert and Nancy, they did divorce, and my aunt. Both of my aunts have said that if if Robert had a vice, it was drinking. If 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 you were gonna say this is the thing, this is the characteristic of Daddy, as they would call him, it would be drinking and um, <clears throat> my dad's told told me the story um, several times and I um, as I convey it to you I'm going to go ahead and convey it as a real bona fide factual story um, because my dad was in the situation and it, it's you know the characters in this story are him uh, and his two parents and this happened I, I, I have a picture I was just looking at of my of my father and me when I was 16 and I I, I looked at it and I, I was you know almost a man you know me and my dad you know, and so there's no picture that I have of my dad at 16 with his father, meaning both of them taking a picture together. Uh, I do have a, a, a picture too of my dad in his t his teenage years in high school, wrestling or being in the band or um, stuff like that. So I can put in my mind. An image I can I can construct an image of what my father might have looked like next to his father Robert Rocco and Robert uh, my dad Ro Rocco actually uh, was named by Robert uh, Robert named him we're gonna call him Rocco um, and that's Rocco, uh, Rocco is the only son of Robert. Robert has uh, two daughters and a son. And the, the son is the oldest, my father. And this situation that they were in, uh, it was a fight. Um, according to what my, how my father uh, describes it, My father, I, I'm sorry, uh, 
my grandfather Robert uh, jumped on though though I think those were the words he jumped on Nancy. So I don't know if Nancy's on the floor or if Nancy's on the couch or if Nancy is against the wall. I don't know exactly, but uh, Robert is overpowering Nancy, his wife. My father, who is either 16 or 17 or um, no earlier than 15, but the way he describes it, he he was he was 16 or 17. He grabbed his father, and my father is a wrestler, and I don't know how physically tra- how physical trained my grandfather was. I remember him as a young, you know, when I was young. I remember interacting with him, and he wasn't a doughy guy, um, uh, but he, he was not a muscular guy. And by the time that I met my grandfather in person, you know, drinking, and he 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 was he was older, and and so he was you know not, not all the time walking around drunk, but just you know he was an older man, and you know, and he had his his passions. He had his little uh, a cup with a breast. You know, drinking uh, you know mug with a breast. Uh, he had his uh, keychains with with a uh, uh, you know a man with a penis that would you know you move it back and forth and you know the penis would go into the to the uh, to the woman's um, uh, vagina through the backside. Um, you know he had his little keychains like that. So he had his little stuff. You know, what I'm saying like um, uh, that characterized him. To me, as I was, you know, eight, nine, ten, whatever age, you know, small, because uh, like I said, he he passed away by the time I was uh, thirteen or fourteen, I believe. So, um, I did not get the sense, or when I think of my grandfather, I don't get the sense of him being a big burly man. That uh, I just, but I know my dad, and he's always had muscles. Um. Uh, as an adult, he, he's not a workout person, but he's always had muscles. And so, um, uh, and at the time, you know, I got I got these other pictures of my of my uh, father in high school wrestling. And so, uh, he was not a big man, but he was not a weak man. So when my my father, who's a wrestler uh, as a young man, when he grabs his father who is physically assaulting his wife, uh, Rocco's mother, Nancy. When Rocco went to grab Robert, according to what my dad said, Robert punches him in the mouth, punches Rocco in the mouth, which resulted in Rocco, my father, having stitches. And... When I visualize the scene in my mind, very clear, cut, and dry, but I've got two questions, and if I were ever going to reenact this, there are two questions I would want to ask um, or fully understand before I re. Before I tried to re, uh, re recapture this scene to maybe put it in a movie or a music video, okay? Uh, one of the questions that I would want to know is, Rocco, Dad, I've heard the story. Could you explain in detail? How your body felt when you lunged at your father and grabbed him. And what are the physical things that you did and what are the physical things that he did that made it so his mouth, I mean his fist connected with your mouth. And after that happened, you know, how did you, did you fall down? 
Did you j did it just push you back? Did you guys stop and look at each other? Um, did you uh, say something? Did he say something? Um, was there a reaction from grandma? Like this is the first, give me details of the breakdown and the internal feelings that you felt, Rocco. Um, Cause that's important for me to understand because then I can make an accurate depiction of it because I can slow down the action enough to convey all of those things. And Rocco, your account of this is more important than anybody else's account of it because you're my dad. And if I'm going to learn how to function in marriage, I'm going to get a lot of that from you and you got a lot of it from your dad. And so that brings me to the second question because... Uh, you know, d d uh, uh, Dad, why don't you describe the events of the day as well as describe the events of that season, as well as describe the events of the whole marriage growing up? Why is Robert comfortable assaulting his wife, his, his uh, 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 Nancy? Why is Robert comfortable assaulting Nancy? How many interactions have happened like this that you've witnessed, Dad, Rocco, where at this moment you feel you need to leap into action? Does it never happen? And so you were, you know, uh, protecting mom, your, your mother, uh, or does it happen so often that you said, you know what, this time is the last. Explain this stuff. So, um, I still have a lot of questions about that. But the situation is very simple. You know, I'm not a dummy. And you're not a dummy that's listening. Um, uh, so, we get it. There was a fight. Punch you in the mouth. The, the 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 remaining part of the story is that when he went to the doctor um, uh, and my dad, uh, when he tells this part of the story or every time that he tells the story, he tells both parts, the part about the fight and what happened that, you know, which ended in the stitches. But then he also tells this part. So this part is equally as important in his mind and and whenever he's conveying it to me. No matter what the context is, no matter which way we're looking at this situation, he makes sure he tells the second part that when he went to the doctor, he did not tell on his father and say, my father hit me in the mouth. Um, uh, I fell down the stairs. And it... According to him, it was painfully uh, uh, obvious that he was punched in the mouth and that he was uh, it, it was obvious he wasn't clumsy enough to um, fall down the stairs. It's plausible. But, you know, sitting in the doctor's office. So what happened to you? I fell down the stairs. So. This bruise and the stitches that I'm putting in your mouth this whole situation, it looks more like a punch in the mouth rather than a uh, a fall downstairs because, uh, you know, I as a doctor, um, you know, there are various types of people that walk in here. There are people who walk in here who got gunshots and gunshots look like gunshots. Um, there are people here who have had fights uh, and punches look like punches. And there are people in here who have fell down the stairs and stare marks uh, on a body on a person's body look different than punch marks. I'm a professional, I'm a doctor, and um, you're telling me that I'm treating you with stitches in your mouth uh, uh, for an injury that looks like a, um, uh, a punch in the mouth. It smells like a punch in the mouth. It, um, it tastes like a boy. I didn't kiss you, but, you know, it, uh, everything about it, based on my medical understanding and my plain eyeballs 
without even tapping into the medical part of me, it looks like a punch in the mouth. And you're telling me that you fell down the stairs. So you walked in here healthily. Uh, you didn't stumble in here. Uh, we had some stairs that brought you up to this emergency room or whatever. And you didn't stumble down the stairs on the way up here. So it looks like you know how to walk. So how did you fall down the stairs? You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay. So he covered, he's covered, he covered for his dad. And I have questions about all this stuff. But I, I, I choose to listen to my father and, um, and just capture and I'll hold my questions until uh, such time that he's ready to answer. So my grandfather jumps on my grandmother. My father jumps into... Um, and grabs his father. His father punches him in the mouth. My dad goes to the hospital, gets stitches in his mouth. Never tells anyone um, an authority that his father hit him in the mouth. And that's the end of the story. Um... I'm going to say that's chapter one. So let me give you chapter two. Um, I am seven years old at this time. And my mother and my father are having uh, a yelling match that I don't believe that yelling matches happened regularly. I don't I don't believe it. But my parents are yelling at each other. And wherever I was, I believe that we were in the, uh, we were living in Joliet. And uh, we had the front room where I used to watch my cartoons. We had the dining room slash living room. Uh, there was a front door and there was on the other side of the room, there was a uh, the, the, the doorway into the kitchen. So the living room and dining room were, were connected rooms. Uh, that did not have any partition. Um, so it was a wide open space and we had our furniture in there and, um, you know, dinner table and couches for sitting down or whatever. Um, often my sisters and I would play in the, in that area. That was kind of our, one of, one of our areas to play. Um, and this happened in that general area of dining room slash um, living room, dining room, slash living room, because we had the dining room, living room, and then we had the front room, <laughs> whatever that dumb stuff means. Um, and my father jumps on my mother, and she is on the ground, uh, on the floor, and my father is on his knees on top of her, and uh, he has her wrists in his hands, uh, both of them, and also uh, with one of his hands, uh, th there was a couple of slaps to the face, and and hurt my wife, my mother's, uh, my mother's hand, free, uh, uh, sw you know, swiping at my father from the down position. Uh, this is happening. Um, I don't think that I did anything. I think that um, I, I don't. Um, I did not leap into action with the same uh, courage that my father at 15 or 16 or 17 had. I did not leap into any action. Uh, partially because I didn't know. Uh, how to leap into any action. Um, my parents, uh, I don't know if I remember any arguments prior to this. I just, you know, um, just having a freaking normal, ridiculous night, you know, nothing special. And my dad is on top of my mother. Uh, 
and uh, some some yelling, and uh, that's the end of that story, because uh, you know that that's that's all I remember. Um, no cops came over um, that I remember. Um, that that was it. So. That left an image in my head, though, that uh, as I grew up and in my marriage, while I was having tough marriage situations, um, I said to myself, oh my goodness, there's an image in my mind that my body and this situation or these situations in my marriage, just the whole context of my marriage, everything that's happening in my marriage, the whole entire context of my marriage, um, every nuance, every detail and every non-detail, um, uh, everything, you know, all the places we lived, and, uh, all of the arguments we've had, all the differences and, and, uh, um, my marriage situation was ripe. At several points to where this image I had in my mind could become a reality where my grandfather jumped on my grandmother, my father jumped on my mother, and I have this image in my head, and the circumstances are ripe. There are words that are pushing buttons in my soul and my flesh to create in me the movement that would fulfill this image that two generations of walkers my grandfather's generation and my father's generation and now he, me, uh, two generations this image is ready to manifest itself and I have multiple Scenarios that I need to spend time talking about each of these scenarios that I remember, as well as the scenarios that I don't remember, um, where my wife and I have had confrontations heated arguments, physical interactions, physical confrontations, before we had children, and while we've had children, and um, when my wife, if she ever has the opportunity to listen to this, um, I'm I'm hoping that I'm hoping that um, 
she will be able to agree with this statement that I am going to make. Because I'm going to make this statement very bold and very um, precise. I've never fulfilled that image. Uh, in all the times that uh, my wife and I have touched each other in less than lovingly ways throughout the entire marriage I never fulfilled the image where I jumped on my wife with the intention of harming her or um, subduing her um, the physical interactions that we have had um, I'm a man and I've done push-ups and sit-ups and uh, two mile runs uh, every six months as a test And my wife is not physically equipped to win a physical one-on-one -on -one fight, one-on-one -on -one physical contest with me. Uh, I know that. And... I believe strongly that my wife knows that too. Um, and this is not to say that my wife is not physically strong and uh, capable of handling herself in any situation. Uh, because in my opinion, she is strong and she is capable of handling herself in any situation. Uh, and my body has felt <laughs> her ability to handle the situation. So um, in as much as I'm not afraid of being beat up by my wife, my wife is also not necessarily afraid of being beat up by me. Um, and it does go without saying that in a physical uh, confrontation, physical altercation uh, between uh, my wife and myself, that once police are called, uh, that changes the dynamic of any husband and wife physical altercation, right? Um, there were at least two times in our marriage where police were called, um, both times nothing materially came of it. And, uh, both times are very, very special to me. Very very special to me, both times. Um, and so, that's another couple of discussions I'm going to end up having or work on having. Um, so, definitively, I feel I can say that I, Matthew, have never fulfilled an image in my mind and in my heart uh, and in my body uh, that that in the two generations before me, where my grandfather jumped on my wife, on my grandmother, his wife. Yeah, my grandfather jumped on his wife. 
My father jumped on his wife. I've never jumped on my wife. Now, I'd be interested. And as a matter of fact, I am interested in my wife's opinions, her recollections, uh, her feelings about all this stuff. I am so interested in hearing her views on all of those altercations, uh, damning or not, whether, you know, you know, we're, you know, uh, uh, we've been married at this point for 14 years. And I think that with the level of the 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 level of of disdain that disdain and contempt that my wife and I at times can express to each other uh, the reason why I love. Being in this marriage uh, during these hard times of arguing and uh, combative discussions um, is because my wife and I, whether she will ever give me any credit or whether she will ever give herself any credit but she and I when we argue I personally find it very productive I, I, I find it very informative and I find it transformative and this particular series or uh, um, this particular radio series is called How to Enjoy Your Marital Arguments Because They Are Productive, Informative, and Transformative. Um, I studied myself and I studied as much as I could, my wife, I studied my grandfather and grandmother. Uh, I studied my father and my mother. I studied her mother, my wife's mother. I studied her father, even though I'd never met him. Um, I studied other marriages, uh, television and, uh, and television marriages, um, movie marriages, uh, uh, actual marriages, uh, celebrity marriages, uh, marriages that are on display, marriages that um, uh, that I get the privilege of interacting with them, marriages on the fly. Um, I studied marriages and I studied people in order to extract as many as many strategies many tools many abilities that i'm able to access so that if no matter what situation you put me in where my wife and I disagree, I wanted to make sure that uh, two things happened. In every single, I boiled it down, two things. I want, I, I want a thousand tools. I want, I want a thousand different strategies, a thousand different tools. I want as many tools and strategies to do everything and now that I can now that I got access to all these tools or uh, all these um, 
uh, strategies or another way to say this, all these technologies, okay, I, once I have them in my uh, in my mind or, or accessible to me, now I can state as simply as possible, these are my two ob objectives that whenever I'm in any type of argument, or conflict or heated discussion, um, uh, no matter what is happening, if it involves my wife and I of 14 years having any, any difference of opinion, any 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 difference of viewpoint any difference of implementation implementation of 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 a principle meaning this is the way we're supposed to do it no this is the way we're supposed to do it um uh, uh any any no matter what the context is there were two things that I was going to make sure these two things happened. Number one, I would be always in control of myself. All of my physical, all of my mental, all of my emotional, I would always be in control of me. When my father jumped on my mother and when my grandfather jumped on my grandmother, both of them used their ability in their body and their ability to control their bodies. They tried to use it and or they did use their bodies to control someone else, their wife, their, their wife, respectively. And, uh, so my number one thing is, I am not going to try to control her in any scenario. I am going to always, number one, control myself. That is the number one thing that I am going to make sure happens in every scenario. A text argument, an email argument, an argument in the store. An argument in the house, an argument in the car, an argument uh, uh, from upstairs to downstairs, an argument at my desk, an argument at the job. Uh, now we're getting into other people, right? Other situations beyond marriage. Now an argument in the car uh, with other drivers, an argument uh, 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 at the toll booth, an argument at the the the, the restaurant or the gas station. Number one, I control me. The second thing that I want to make sure that I implement into every, every scenario in my marriage when it comes to a disagreement is here her out, comma, anticipate any actions on her part towards me. Ah, this is a better way to say it. Okay, so the first one is be in control of yourself or I control myself. Right. The second um, thing would be pay close attention to her. And part of me just wants to say pay close attention. Because there, there might be other factors, you know, um, that could be brought up in the con in the in the scenarios between my grandfather 
and my grandmother and uh, between my father and my mother. Um, the only thing that they had to worry about was my grandmother and my mother. They are women and as skillful, as knowledgeable and as powerful as both my mother and my grandmother are. Um, I, I think that both my grandfather and my father and my grandmother and my grand and my mother, I think all four of them would, would safely assume that boys beat the girls in a physical contest. As evidenced by the fact that when the when 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 uh, when Robert jumped on Nancy, Nancy didn't overpower Robert, and neither did Vivian. Vivian did not overpower Rocco. I hope that Robert and Rocco were not using force to the degree that would have rendered their wives uh, in a harsh state of being abused or feeling abused. Uh, I've known my grandmother. I've talked to my grandmother um, before I really ever put it in my head, oh my God, grandma, this happened to you when you were younger. Um, my grandmother uh, was no pushover. So um, if she were scarred mentally by what happened, by the time I got to know my grandmother at different junctures in my life, uh, she did not wear those scars uh, as a timid, uh, fearful woman. Um, uh, by the time I was an adult, my grandparents were divorced from each other. Um, and both of them are, are dead now. And both my grandparents, my grandfather Robert and my grandmother Nancy, both of them are dead and they are buried in a columbarium. Uh, in uh, I think it's Westchester, I believe, and uh, she's on top. He's on the bottom. He's been there since he died when I was, you know, twelve or thirteen or whatever age I was. Uh, my parents, they are divorced, and they've been divorced since I was um, ten years old. The divorce decision happened when I was eight and it took them about two years to be divorced and um, one of the interesting things about my father's divorce from my mother and my grandfather's divorce from my grandmother is that both divorces happened in the same season meaning that my grandparents they had a lot of money or enough money to to easily go down, visit a lawyer, draw up some paperwork uh, and uh, make the arguments uh, for uh, I'm going to take this. You're going to take that and, uh, you know, whatever. And both uh, my grandparents were uh, likely uh, adept in uh, handling those scenarios uh they you know had to evict people out of properties and had to go make contracts and go get mortgages so you know going to visit a lawyer to, to dissolve the marriage wasn't nothing but hey i'm gonna i'm about to head out to go do blah 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 you know uh, you know whether there's emotions involved but you know my grandmother settled in my prospect and my grandfather settled in um in oak park and so that's where they lived respectively uh and ended their uh, their 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 living days uh those were the last two residences 
um, other than my grandmother in the nursing homes. You know, I, I don't know if I count that as a residence because uh, I don't know if she got any mail. Um, but as as an operating working woman uh, or working at things woman and, uh, uh, you know, fully uh, uh, functioning uh, man, uh, my grandpa, my grandparents, they lived separately. And um, my dad and his two sisters would, you know, go back and forth and hang out with, uh, you know. Oh, oh, oh. And my grandmother, she uh, she maintained the picture uh, that um, of her and Robert and the three children. Uh, so uh, that, that that picture uh, was always up. And even when my grandmother got remarried, um, that picture stayed up. You know, the, the new husband uh, was not going to come in and uh, redecorate and take down uh, the legacy of Rob, Robert Walker. Uh, you, you know, um, so th it, it's it's such uh, to me, it, it's such richness in in my um, in my upbringing and in my family um, culture. Uh it's so many things to think about and so many ways to go with it. And I'm, I'm just having the time of my life, uh, thinking about this stuff and, uh, and applying it to my life because I feel fortunate that because I've never acted on that image that was passed down to me from my grandfather down to my father. And then to me, uh, at, seven years older, eight years old, or whatever age I was, um, because I didn't do that, um, I'm not in jail, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not, uh, my wife feel, I feel, this is what I feel, I feel my wife feels safe enough to vent to me at, and say, some of the harshest words that a human being can say to another person. She feels safe enough to say those things to me. She feels safe enough to come downstairs and and uh, say words to me that aren't always loving. But, you know, I know she loves me uh, down in her heart because I love her, too. Um, but those words... Uh, as they're communicated to me, uh, they sound pretty harsh, and uh, they have the effect on my son, where he, as an eight-year-old and getting ready to eventually go through puberty, and he's got teeth changing in his mouth, and you know, and um, got school pressures, and as he's getting older, he's got, you know, he's got his. He's got his backpack worth of problems that he's carrying, right? <laughs> My little baby boy. <laughs> and and he um he can vent to me and express to me, Daddy, Dad, I'm supposed to be Dad, Dad. You guys argue. And um, you know. And because of my experience, uh, I can understand how he's feeling. Because I, I was out, you know, seven years old. He's, he's, he's eight years old, you know. He's the same age I was when things went sour. So thank you, Lord, for reminding me. And I've spent years and years, years and years and years and years uh, 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 not only preparing uh, to make sure that my responses to my wife are not uh, violent responses, okay? Uh, no matter what she says to me, she doesn't deserve a violent response. My wife, doesn't matter what she says to me, she doesn't deserve for me to jump on her. <laughs> I mean, if you just look at it just based on the Constitution, freedom of speech, I don't care what buttons you press with your words, you say whatever you want to say, Right. Um, and the consequences shouldn't be a physical retaliation, physical revenge for something that you said. <laughs> My 
goodness. And I'm not saying it in a condemning way. I'm saying, you know, is please don't hit somebody because they said something. Okay? At the worst, what you want to do is say something bad. <laughs> don't physically assault somebody for saying something. You know, if you, you know, fight words with words at the most, you know, uh, I've learned at times to fight words with silence. And I've learned to fight silence with words. Um, I've learned to fight, um, To fight, I've learned to fight a uh, an outrageous display of anger. I've learned to fight outrageous displays of anger with um, displays of frozenness uh, looking down at the floor um, uh, physically not looking threatening you know not my body language uh, is not threatening uh, slumping over as to appear more pitiful and less aggressive looking. Better to look more pitiful when your wife is uh, screaming at you than to look more aggressive when she's screaming at you because as two people escalate an argument, and as they escalate uh, physical altercations, as those things get escalate, things can get out of control. They don't always get out of control. People say things always get out of control. No, just because my grandfather was on top of my grandmother, just because my father was on top of my mother doesn't necessarily mean that my grandfather and grandmother or my father and my mother were out of control that doesn't mean necessarily not saying you know if you can make a case of course that that's out of control yes but you can analyze it with some care, concern, and um, precision, uh, and um, and some intelligence, you can actually um, you can you can zoom into the situation and interpret what may look like something is out of control. You can zoom so far in that you can you can uh, masterfully understand every every moment, you know, probably down to the down to every three to five seconds thing that happened every three to five seconds. You could almost um, do a play by play to. Um, to develop an opinion and sometimes develop it as a fact that uh, both parties were in control or uh, one party who was on the bottom may have been on the bottom and physically overpowered but that person was out of control and the person that was subduing them on top was in control. 
So you can and because and, and I'm a, you know I'm a, I'm a um, uh, paralegal uh, in the military for for many years and um, uh, uh, one example, you know, like I said, when I told the stories about my father jumping on my mother and my grandfather jumping on my um, my grandmother, it's easy to walk away with the understanding that the two men shouldn't be hitting the two girls, the two women, okay? The two men, uh, the men were out of control and the women were uh, in control uh, or the women were, you know, weaker and the men were stronger. So, you know, there's no, uh, you know, you can, you can walk away with some conclusion. But I'm actually, uh, with my material, um, I'm actually going to be digging deeper because um, when you, when you, you can you don't have to really look further than um, uh, police interactions with the community. And I love talking about uh, uh, Chicago police or uh, L.A. police or um, uh, police departments all across the world, uh, all across the United States and the people that they serve. I love talking about this stuff because it's so uh, in the same way that uh, uh, marriages have altercations. Uh, it's police people sometimes that come over to interact in these situations. And then, you know, uh, uh, because they're trained to come into scenarios of marital uh, back and forth, that must mean that police officers are experts and police forces are experts in dealing with um, conflicts. Not just marriage conflicts, but conflicts themselves. And so when, when there's a court case, uh, they can testify and they can break it down. Everyone's actions, you know, three to five, every three to five seconds, they can break down everything and they can make a case that even though it was five police officers on one dude, that the one dude was out of control and the five were in control. And so the five were uh, correct and right. And the one was wrong and should be in trouble. So in marriage, the, the, the physical strong, generally speaking, um, the man is usually the one that is stronger than the woman. And so when they get in an altercation, uh, uh, the, 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 the man can handle himself physically. And the woman, uh, uh, if she can't handle herself, what she has at her disposal is uh, 911 uh, or, or, you know, please call or, you know, come over and help me out, you know, whatever. So, uh, uh each party has two separate options. Um, uh, there are scenarios where the husband calls the police on the wife because the wife has done something. Uh, and, um, and in those situations, uh, um, th 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 there is a caricature that that messes with the ego of the of the man meaning when I, I you know for I can speak for myself that uh, I've never felt comfortable calling the police on my wife uh, and in the two times that uh, that my wife um, called the police on me uh, I feel very fortunate in how both of those situations turned out. I am so freaking grateful to the Lord. And I'm grateful to my wife. That those two interactions. Could have. Uh, damaged my military career. Which is not the most important thing. They could have damaged. Um, uh, my wife. Those interactions. Uh, those situations. Oh I'm sorry. No no no. You know. In terms of me getting in trouble in those two scenarios where she called the police, uh, they could have damaged my military career. They could have damaged um, uh, my. Um, they could have damaged me. You know, I, I you know, I could have 
uh, uh, had uh, a scenario where, you know, they beat the crap out of me, you know. The police officer, you know, hey, oh, so you want to beat up your wife? Let's take you uh, and beat you up. Fortunately, in both of those scenarios, uh, that didn't happen. And uh, I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. I thank my wife. Um, I thank my wife. Um... And the reason why I bring up police officers and their interactions with uh, with the people that they serve um, police have a lot more firepower at their disposal to handle their interactions and physical interactions and altercations with the people that they serve. So, as I told you before, I interacted with multiple people, multiple TV shows, multiple movies, multiple readings on the internet, uh, uh, multiple books, you know, whenever I had a chance to read some books, uh, whenever I had a chance to, to be involved in, in a discussion and videos and scenarios, I feel that I have uh, several, I think I can, I think I could probably come up with, uh, I, I, you know, and that's what, that's what this challenge is for me making this, um, this series uh, called uh, how to enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive, informative, and transformative. Uh, as as we delve into this uh, in depth, um, I feel that I can come up with at least twenty solid, solid strategies, twenty solid tools. 20 solid technologies that if you put these 20 scenarios, 20 technologies or 20, uh, 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 these 20 items, these 20 strategies and you implement them into your life, implement them into your uh, day to day. Implement them into your circumstances, however you see fit. Because once you have the tools, you know you know when it's time to use a hammer, you're going to use a hammer. Uh, don't use a hammer on your lady. Please don't use a hammer on your lady. Uh, but when you got tools in the toolbox, different tools are for different situations. And I'm going to be able to get, I can give you at least 20, no problem, like zero that I can rattle them off. Okay. And that's what I do. Uh, in 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 the study that you'll be you you'll be able to uh, purchase, uh, uh, you know, uh, right on m 3 dotscom Okay, so you know that's easy. Twenty strategies. Okay, um, and that's for dealing with your marriage, so that you don't jump on your wife, you don't jump on your husband, you don't jump on your kids. You don't jump on your family members. You don't jump on. <laughs> you don't jump on the police. <laughs> you don't jump on the judge. <laughs> you don't jump on the other inmates. You know what I'm saying? Um. Uh. The um. Uh. Police officers. Police forces. They have. Not they have their tools are weapons. They have physical weapons. So in so the twenty the twenty situate the twenty technologies slash uh, uh, my twenty bullet points of strategies or tools my twenty tools. The cops have these same twenty tools. 
you know, many cops are married. Many police officers are married, you know. Uh, so they've got these same twenty two. When I when I say all this stuff, you're gonna be you're gonna be um you'll be like dog on it. You know, I'm glad I got the list, but man, that's doggone pretty doggone simple. Yeah, you're right. I do got that, and I do got that, and I got this, I got that. Now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 it, it, so the police officers that uh, throughout the United States, they've got all of these same tools and strategies and technologies. They got all of them. Just like you do. So that's an equal playing field. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on the planet, everybody in America, uh, Midwest, East Coast, West Coast, South, Southern, you know, everybody has these 20 uh, strategies, technologies, whatever you want to call them. This book, these 20 bullet points, everybody has access to them. Everybody can develop them. Okay? Police officers and police forces, on the other hand, they have physical weapons on top of the 20. Okay? So, I could list the things right now, but I'm going to go in uh, and explain uh, the various Weapons that police officers have access to in order to conduct service to their communities uh, and um, serve the people um, that they serve, they have these weapons at their disposal on top of the 20. And... Um, their choice in how they use those tools, they are trained in using those weapons, probably also trained in using the 20 tools, probably, but they're, they're trained in how to use the weapons, and then when they go to use those weapons... On the people that they serve. They have the ability. To also. Uh, help to charge. The people. That they serve. With crimes. Which means that person. That the police officer has served um, have they have a road to um, they they have several events that they have to physically go through you know whether it's go to court or go to jail or you know go to um, what's it called um, go to um, uh, probation and uh, go to you know, whatever, just whatever. So those weapons um, in this series, I I analyze and discuss the twenty tools and. The multiple weapons and um, my 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 uh, desire was to use what we understand about police and policing and police forces and how they serve the communities that they serve and protect, right? Uh, use that to help husbands and wives know how to use the 20 strategies or the 20 tools in the same way that the police officers throughout the United States are trained in using the weapons. 
that they used to serve. So the same way that an officer is trained in using uh, mace or pepper spray. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, the better better one is the taser. Um, uh, police officers in, in some states, um, you can't carry a taser unless you yourself have been uh, a recipient of taser training, which means you can't tase somebody if you have never been tased. So you go through the taser training so you know how it feels so that when you use your taser, you know how not to abuse your use of the taser because you've been through taser training yourself. And just like you as a police officer are um, are a human being, so are the people that police officers serve are human beings. Whether those human beings fit a stereotype or not, <clears throat> whether they are uh, on drugs or not, whether they are uh, doing things illegally and resisting or not, whatever they are, they are still human beings. And human beings feel pain. And so whatever police forces throughout the country that require a, 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 a taser trained officers to be the only ones that use tasers on the people they serve I love that concept I love it personally I love it I love it I love it uh, I've received taser training personally um as a paralegal we were doing uh in when i was a 400 ligand uh um <laughs> this this story is ridiculous what i'm about to tell you this, this is a dumb story okay um the uh uh the boss the command judge advocate in our office was kind of razzing and kind of hazing the 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 junior officer and everybody's lawyers in this scenario except for me I'm a paralegal and so I'm the only paralegal and in this context there are four lawyers Two of them are military lawyers, and the the uh, the senior lawyer, uh, he is a um, a major, and he is in charge of the office. And the two civilian attorneys are uh, uh, one of them is a retired military person, and the other one is a uh, was a current drilling uh, reservist. So you know he'd drill whenever he drilled, but then his civilian job was you know with us there. Uh, at Fort Hunter Liggett uh, in California, and uh, the, the 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 officer was a captain, uh, and then the the uh, leader was a major, and so the major uh, was uh, razzing or uh, hazing a little bit. The captain said, uh, "For um for for law day, uh, we need uh, we 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 need to have taser training. Let I want you to get tased. Now he's the boss and he's the major." Um, uh, this doesn't fall under unlawful order, so to speak, because he did not order the captain to get taser training. Okay. But it falls under, um, to me, it falls under hazing. Um, because, uh, for the span of about 
two or three weeks while we're trying to do a uh, an event, an annual event uh, that we had done two years in a row. Um, so now we're in our third year. I'm personally in my third year of doing this event called Law Day. Um, this boss who had not been a part of previous Law Day years. And I don't know if he's ever participated in Law Day with the professionalism and wonderfulness that we celebrated Law Day at Hunter Liggett. You know, uh, you know, freaking love Law Day. I love it. I love Law I I want to celebrate Law Day still going forward in my life. I want to I want to I want to celebrate Law Day. So our office is not only tasked with Law Day, we originated the task. We are in charge of the entire installation. Anything we need to do Law Day, all we got to do is say, yo, need you. And they say, where you need me to do. Okay? That's how much Law Day meant to Fort Hunter Liggett. And I'm the POC for Law Day. So, <clears throat> I see that the captain is a little bit stressed about this situation. Um, he doesn't, uh, that particular captain um, was a very, very good man. Very good man. And the major, I consider him a good man too. So both of them are good men. Uh, and uh, I don't know uh, my jumping in to do what I did. Uh, I believe it was dumb. OK. And I will I will never, ever, ever do this again in my life. This this was one of the dumb uh, things that I've done in my life. Um. Uh, uh, I'm glad that I did it. I'm not saying that that I'm not glad I did it. I'm very glad I did it. Okay, I'm very glad. When I, going forward in life, I'm going to tell you something. If I hadn't lived through this moment, um, uh, there are things that I would not have the confidence to do. I would not have the confidence to do a lot of the stuff I'm working on if I had not lived through this moment. But it was a this was a dumb, a dumb decision on my part. Uh, I would never do it again. If. If somehow I teleported back in time into my body back in 2000. Uh, 13. 2012. Was this the second year law day? Maybe second year law day. I don't, whatever. Um, if I go back 2012, or yeah, 2012. Um, I would never. Even if I had the full knowledge of everything I know right now, leave. I, that's, that was a 2019, uh, going on 20. You know, that's uh, six years ago, um, seven years ago. No, 2012. That's eight, uh, eight, uh, eight years ago. <laughs> Please, uh, I still wouldn't do it again. Never. It's dumb. What I did was dumb. Um, <clears throat> that lawyer was very, very. Um, you could tell he was stressed out a little bit. You know. If time brought it up, how do I deal with this? My my boss is the, is he's the boss. He does my evaluations, and uh, I don't want to do this. And if I if I say that I don't want to do it, you know, could it affect my evaluation? This could actually be a real big deal. I could be fighting for my you know I want to I want to also make major you know so uh, you know this is what I you know he he didn't talk to me but I could tell uh, you know that. that 
you know, I got instincts and, you know, I talk to, you know, people and talk to them and all that. So what I did uh, in front of my bosses was say, uh, hey, uh, sir, instead of the captain doing the taser demonstration, uh, I'll, I'll do it. And uh, the room shifted, and the captain was relieved. Uh, I, I never was thanked by the captain, um, and not that I didn't need thanks, didn't need thanks, but um, the ma- I, you know uh, while I was telling this story just now, I just thought about it. Uh, if the major really wanted to see a taser demonstration, he would have done it himself. You see what I'm saying? You see, that's why it was dumb for me to volunteer because, and I'll never do this again, because a taser demonstration is not a part of law day. He just want to use his power to do something fun and he doesn't even want to do it himself. He wants to watch for his own, you understand what I'm saying? So I went through taser training on law day. They tased me. My wife watched in disgust. I believe I have the video footage. I, I tried to make it so that I was the only one who videotaped. But some other dumb dude was up in there, you know, a uh, uh, former cop himself. He videotapes it, too. Now, I don't think he put it out. Whatever. I got mine. And, it, you know, whenever I uh, come across it, you know, that's going to be a publishable. I'm going to publish it to the world so they could see me uh, being involved in taser training. And... Uh, those that are taser trained, uh, one of the elements of it is that you carry the taser in your off hand. In other words, if you're right hand dominant, then your taser goes into your left holster so that your non-dominant hand uses the taser or whatever. And that's for a particular reason. Um, uh. I'm going to go into all of the weapons in this series because here's the thing. How to enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive, informative, and transformative. Here's the deal. If you as a husband or if you as a wife have a taser, have a, you have, let's say you have a weapon in your, you got a taser. And uh, your spouse has a taser on your um, holster, okay? And so you both are arguing, right? As soon as she reaches for her taser and you reach for your taser, it's about to get escalated into some taser. It's going to be some tasering going on, right? So you tase him and he tases you. So now y'all tasering each other, okay, with these weapons, okay? (laughs) It's not productive, (laughs) <laughs> that <laughs> it's not productive okay and the the 20 tools or uh the 20 strategies that I'm going to discuss you can deploy them the same way that a police officer deploys a taser and that's how I'm going to talk about this stuff because People watch cops. People watch uh, cop shows and, and and cop this and cop that and police fire this and blah. So it's going to be easy for me to use natural images from police interactions with the people that they serve to discuss how in marriage how you use the tools that you have 
Now, here's a third part of this that, okay, so number the first thing is I'm going to talk about the 20, okay? Then number two, I'm going to talk about the weapons, okay? And number three, I'm going to talk a little bit about that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are mental positions, our thoughts. Thoughts are strongholds. Long standing uh, ideas and opinions are strongholds. Check this out. The image that was in my mind that would enable me to jump on my wife during any conflict is a stronghold. That image was a stronghold and so the weapons of our warfare the weapons of my warfare and hopefully for you the weapons of your warfare are mighty through God not your strength not your might your physical ability your verbal ability your manipulative ability your ability to make a phone call, your ability to set up some stuff and do some stuff and uh, put some, you know, something in the food and uh, catching it off bat. Not, not mighty through you, but mighty through God to do what? Pull down strongholds. When I said earlier that I never acted on that image, another way for me to say that is that I pulled down that stronghold so that my response could be a healthy response, a productive response, an informative response, a transformative response. And I used response. I try, I thought I was trying to make it connect that the way I said it was not best. Um, uh, 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 I pulled down the stronghold so that my response could be so that my responses were on a level of maturity and on a level of Madness that could hopefully, by my son, be admired. Hopefully, the way that I've conducted myself in all these altercations and, and the ones that my son has had the misfortune to witness and be a part of because he's in the family hopefully I've demonstrated number one control of myself and number two that I've paid attention to my wife and I've paid attention to him when my father was on top of my mother again uh, I don't know if he was in control and she was out of control or, or if she was out of control and or she was in control and he was out of control I don't know exactly he's the only dog on seven you know seven or eight I, I don't I didn't know you know and I'm not going to add and embellish that 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 story 
um, because I don't know. Um, all I want to do is set up the circumstance that happened so that you understand where we're going with this information. And uh, uh, but my father, I know. No, I don't know. Whether he was paying attention to me. Um, I know he was paying attention to my wife. I mean, um, paying attention to his wife, my mother. But I don't know if he was paying attention to me. Uh, I, I feel that my wife pays attention to my son and my daughter. But, you know, my son is older. And again, he's at the same age right now that I was when my parents uh, split up. And when my grandparents split up. They split up in the same season. My grandparents, they had money. So it was easy for them to go get stuff, you know, go ahead and get divorced. But my uh, my, 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 my parents, uh, they, they didn't have that much money. So my dad had to borrow money. Uh, in order to finalize the divorce. So. Um, so anyway. Uh, I hope that. Um, let me make sure that I. Um, put this in here. Information there. Uh, discuss. The 20. Tools. Right. Strategies. 20, 20 tools, 20 strategies, 20 items. Uh, I will not call them weapons. Uh, at the at the very greatest, I will call them non <laughs> non carnal. Darn it! Come on, man. Non carnal. Right, non-carnal weapons. That's at the. I will. I really don't want to call them weapons. So I'm gonna figure out a different way to say. It. But anyway, you know, the 20 tools, the 20 strategies, the 20 items, the 20 non-carnal weapons. Okay. Um. Discuss. Um. Police. Weapons. And the people that they serve, right? Mm. And then finally discuss the weapons of our warfare. Dot, 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 <laughs> pulling down strongholds. Boom. Now, um, this episode is a summary, okay, of what I'm going to discuss. Now, so uh, one of the one of the problems about me, okay, this is, and this is a problem. This is a problem for for for, for you uh, as the listener. A problem for uh, those of you who um may or may not like my style of discussion. Uh, I is what I is. Okay, so um, this was a long summary so that I could introduce this material. Uh, into the world, into, you know, into somehow you receive this. It's a summary. Okay? It's a summary. Uh, I'm, I'm letting you know 
what we're going to discuss. And however you get to the material where I've discussed this, um, I, I'll be thankful. This here is going to be on uh, YouTube, Facebook, um, and uh, uh, wherever I put it. Okay. And here is how you get to this material. Um, there's going to be two ways. All right. Um, one way is uh, I'm going to, once I have it all recorded, because um, I don't have it all recorded right now, but I have all my stuff together. Um, but once it's all recorded, it will be on m 3 dascom as a, um, you know, as something that you can purchase. Uh, the, the, um, the title of it is going to be How to Enjoy your marital arguments because they are productive, informative, and transformative. Okay? Um, so I'm going to record that material and I'm going to place it on my website somewhere. It'll be at m 3 dascom somewhere and you can got to kind of, you, you know, however you're going to get to it, boom. That's at least one. That's just one of the starting places. Uh, the second uh, potential way that you can get this material is if you are part of my uh, sphere of influence and or a part of the Mad Ellipses district, um, you have access to me by uh, my email, the letter M, the number three, the letter D O T S at yahoo.com. So M three dots at yahoo.com. You have access to me through Facebook Messenger, you friend me on uh, Facebook, Matt Ellipsis. That's my name uh, on Facebook. It's not my real name. It's my title, Matt Ellipsis. Um, and, uh, uh, and you can send me a message through Messenger, and you can ask me, hey, when are you putting this out? When are you doing this live or whatever? Because... Um, uh, with some things that are going on <laughs> in my life right now, uh, I'm, I didn't realize I, I was going to have situations where I'd be able to share this stuff in front of people. Oh my God. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> I said, and, and it's not just this. I've got other, I've got other, um, uh, radio teachings. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm a, I don't even really officially come up with names for this stuff. I just, I'm putting out the material and I want to put it out there. Then I'm getting responses and it's like, okay, uh, all right, I'll, uh, you know, I'm like, whoa, all right. So I guess I got to uh, grab this and we'll go. And I guess this is what we talk about today. Whoa. And I have all my stuff and, and we go into it. Okay. So, um, whenever I get up to share this material, um, if you let me know that you want to know, or you want to be there, uh, when I do it, um, then, you know, we'll, we'll arrange it. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for, um, listening. Now, listen, I'm gonna tell you something. If you just listen to this whole thing, okay, there's a possibility that you may not exactly need to spend the money, um, to get it from me. You may not need to um, come see me in person, share the material. Um, because this YouTube video or Facebook video is enough. You, you get the point. You know, you get the point. You get it. Um, and you probably have some tools in your toolbox, um, that are probably far greater than the 20 that I'm going to talk about. Um, and you know, you understand police weapons and all that, man, listen, I wish you the best, you know what I'm saying? And I, I want to say thank you. Just if you got through all of this and my goodness, I'm long winded, golly, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for um, uh, participating in my radio 
career. Thank you. Uh, in, in, in all of this. Thank you so much. And so if we never get the chance to get acquainted, if we never have the opportunity to uh, to interact beyond this particular video. Um, just thank you for giving me some of your attention, you know, and, and hopefully uh, down the road, uh, hopefully I have something else that you're interested in hearing. Um, and doggone it. Listen, <laughs> it's not just one way street. If you got information or if you want me to come hang out with you, have some of your stuff that you're doing, <laughs> I told you how you could become as part of my sphere of influence. You know, Facebook, Twitter, all them, you know, uh, all of them, um, whatever. Let's work it out. So thank you very much. Enjoy your day, evening, whatever. Enjoy. So talk to you later. Turn the video off. <laughs>